Hey, greetings. Uh, thanks for staying on the video. Uh, I have someone on the phone that wanted to share. Uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, let us know what you dealt with. My name's William Maple, and I've uh, lived in Alaska for about 19 years. And in 2013, I had an experience in the Butte area off of East Hour Road, you know, where I was walking my dog and she alerted me that she just did not want to continue on. Right. Uh, what time of day was it? And this was about, uh, about 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. Okay. And... I start looking around and I he keeps looking over again in one in the northerly direction. I look and I see something that appearing appears to be a a human form standing at the end of the road. And I unsling my rifle, hit it with the light, and this thing puts his hand up to feel its eyes from from the light, and where I did see a, a red or orange glow, you know, from the eyes, and then it just bolted due north. And it moved uh, really, yeah. really fast, or it, it moved incredibly fast, it, faster than I could have. Right, and and our road, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's roughly a what a mile south of the reindeer farm, going towards the Kinnick River. Yes, it's in about then maybe in maybe about uh, three eighths of a mile north of Connick River. Okay. Over there by the old Delroy's Bar, huh? Yep. It's actually, as soon as you make from the Delroy's Bar, it's the, it's the yeah, that's the next right hand turn that you would make going towards Connick River. Copy that. Okay. Now. I, I know your experience was brief, but when was when you got up to Alaska? When was the first time you heard about the Hairy Man prior to this experience? And what were your thoughts when you first heard that? Uh, this is from my mother-in-law, and she she told me about the Hairy Man when she lived in Falls Pass. Okay, can you, you know, can you elaborate a little bit on that? That um, that uh, you know, she was afraid to come out of out of her house because the hairy man was peeking in her window. Right. What what were your thoughts when you first heard that being fresh to Alaska mm -hmm. and just kind of like you know I, you, you're hit with that information? What what did it? Uh, what were your thoughts on it? My first thoughts were that sounds like Bigfoot or AKA Sasquatch in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, right. Now, yeah, yeah, you had no reason to doubt her? What What was her character like? Or was she just plain, blunt, straightforward like most Native women are? Just, just blunt. You know, I didn't, and with Lena, I didn't have any reason to doubt her whatsoever. Right. So did it did it kind of come full circle with your experience in 2013? Just all of a sudden, there's this being there at the end of the road. Like, it must have been um, a shock. <laughs> honestly, you know, excuse my language, but you're like, holy shit, she's right. Yeah. Now, w once it took off running, you, you had made mention you, you, you backtracked walking backwards with your rifle at the ready, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking backwards, got my head on a swivel, I'm making sure there's nothing behind me, and my and my dog is, you know, she's trying to pull me back toward the house the whole time. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm on, you know, walk, you know, backtracking me on maybe 100 feet, and then yeah, you know, then turned around and you know, and double timed it back to that. Gotcha, gotcha. And and you held on to this information for quite a while just because of the ridicule, right? Yeah. And because I knew if I told any of the people that I worked with about this, that uh, that they would just roast my ass every day. Right. 
Yeah, it, it's a shame. I, I, you know, with so many people that reach out to me, it's it's the same story. I appreciate you be willing to share in your name and, and you know your own voice and, and sharing your own experience and your own words. A lot of people don't yeah. want to, and I, I understand that. I respect it because it's it can be rough, especially if you're in a position, you know, where it could be used against you, even though you didn't ask for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, actually, it could it could have put my, you know. You know, my security clearance in, into uh, into question. Right, since, since right. The, since I'm Fort Richardson at the time. Gotcha. And, and you're a former military, correct? Well, military contract. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and those I, I know those contracts can be real, real touchy as far as that security clearance stuff, man. It can be rough. Yeah, because they they touch on you know, isn't. Are they mentally stable? Can you, are they competent? Right. But sort of thing. But. Yeah, and those contracts too are so lucrative. It's real cutthroat with other employees. You know, they may have a buddy that they want in that position. They could use something like that against you just to get you out and make room for someone else. You know. Mm -hmm. Or if there's somebody on the contract that doesn't like you, they could use that to to potentially get you kicked off the contract yeah yeah it, it's pretty sad it, you know what i hate about the whole situation like yours is you didn't ask for that experience but yet you're going to be held accountable like you know you they just let you out of api or something you know what i mean I, I, and i never understood yeah. that mindset you know and you know and ever since then you know ever since you know if they did when they do let you out and uh you you know like well he's crazy he thinks he's bigfoot everywhere right and that that's the kind of thing that could stick with you especially doing the kind of work you were doing you know counting on those contracts because i mean like i said they're they're lucrative <laughs> Well, hey, I, I want to thank you for, uh, go ahead and stay on the line, but um, I want to thank you for sharing your experience. I know it was brief, uh, and I understand how it is to hold on to an experience uh, just for the fear of ridicule, and I, I appreciate you being willing to call and, and speak up about what you witnessed, e even though it was brief. Um, it, it's still, you know, and it happened in 2013. There's there's several other occurrences uh, in that area. I mean, even before then and since then. I mean, there's been like five or six reports from the Jim Creek area just this year. You know what I mean? So you're, you're not alone in that. No, just this year. Oh yeah, just wow. this year. Not not counting your experience from 2013. Yeah, so just just this year, uh, all the way from down by Friday Creek and Wolf Point to Jim Creek proper, uh, on up, you know, uh, road crossing right near the Knick River Bridge there, you know, uh, with the old train mm -hmm. trestle and, and whatnot. There was a, a, a sighting there. Um, on the opposite side, the Knick River Road, you know, that goes up to the lodge there. There was a road crossing there. Uh, I, I forget the name of the road right off hand um, but there was uh, geez that was just two months ago there was a road crossing on the opposite side of the river so it, it's it's an area and you know where you had your experiences in that same corridor I mean you're literally right across the road from the Jim Creek area you know not too far from the racetrack and you know the Jim Creek yeah. trailhead and all that yeah, it, it looked like you was crossing East Tower Road from a patch of woods that would would have been directly across from my house over onto the you know, north of East Tower Road. Right, right, and you know what? It, it's coincidentally, you know that that blue apartment building we were talking about yesterday. There was a report from there not too long back about screams coming from up on the butte. You know, and it, it maybe it was up on the butte, maybe it wasn't, but it was loud enough where it sounded like it was just right on top of them, according to what they said. And that's just, okay. I mean, that's just a straight shot north from where you had your experience. So it, it's a continuing thing. Easily within walking distance. Oh yeah, oh definitely. 
All right, well, stay on the line here, and, and I thank you again for sharing, and uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. So I, I want to thank him again for coming forward and sharing his experience out in the butte. It, it's rather brief, uh, just mere seconds when, you know, he beamed it, it put its hands up, ran north. Uh, I appreciate him being willing to come forward and share. Uh, something else to remember, this area has, uh, his experience happened in 2013, but there's been like five, five reports I could think of offhand uh, from the Jim Creek area, which is just due east from there. I mean, it's basically in that same corridor from the Knick River or the Knick Glacier. I apologize. You know, you had sightings at Friday Creek, uh, Wolf Point, uh, some of the little lagoons around that area between, you know, the Knick River and, you know, Lazy Mountain. Um, just that that corridor there uh, a few road crossings one across the road or across the river i should say forgive me uh down towards the lodge the glacier view lodge uh about a mile from the glacier view lodge coming back west there was a road crossing less than two months ago uh about a month ago there was a sighting of one crossing the road right at the train trestle and the bridge right there at the Knick river on the old Glen highway and of course his experience right there off of our road east our road um that was in 2013 but it just goes to show <clears throat> it's a, a continuing thing anyone out in the butte area um just just be aware you know uh you never know you never know just like going outside you may run into a bear at the trash can one morning it, it's you know as random as that you could easily be witness to what, you know, the our interviewee uh, experienced. Uh, something else uh, I wanted to share with you. It comes from Cynthia. Um, the, the last upload I did uh, about the young lady um, having the mind speak happen and whatnot. Well, Cynthia, uh, she lives in the same general area on the Kuskokwim. Uh, what she wanted to share because she heard the story she wanted to share her experience and what happened with her it's it's relatively brief however uh, she felt it was important enough to reach out and share so I'm, I'm going to share with you guys she was berry picking with her grandma uh, about 10 years ago is when this happened and when her and her grandma went out berry picking just right she didn't want the village shared but they were literally just in view of the village they were up on the tundra they were picking berries they could easily see their own homes from there and she said something similar happened to her um she said that her grandma was about 10 feet away from her and facing the other direction she was just kind of laid back on the tundra being lazy because uh, at the time she was about 12 years old and she was just being a kid kicking her boots around and she said she was just kind of sitting there eating a blackberry every once in a while, just kind of mainly bored. She wanted to do other stuff, but her grandma was, you know, taking her berry picking. So she felt stuck as a kid. You know, she wanted to go ride her bike or do whatever. Well, she said as she was sitting there, she thought her grandma was getting her attention because her grandma, she heard her grandma say her name. Now, she said where she was, she was about 50 to 60 feet from the black spruce line and the willows and she's facing the willows her grandma's behind her in the open tundra facing away from her so she sits up and says huh and her grandma kind of looks back and, and just shook her head and was continuing to pick her berries so she ignored it so she sits up a little more after that and she's just kind of looking around just being bored eating some berries out of her bucket and just being a kid and she said she heard her grandma a second time and it was coming from the trees in front of her and so she stood up and she turns around and her grandma heard it as well and her grandma's eyes were real big and her grandma was uh, as she heard it and stood up her and turned around to see her grandma her grandma was already coming to her grabbed her hand she left her bucket and they they took the trail luckily the trail was right off to their right going right back the way they came and the, the sound came from the direction in front of her. <laughs> she said, as they 
cleared the tundra into a little bit of the tree line it, it was broken trees it wasn't real dense or anything in that part of the path where they had to go through and there was an old dilapidated house closest to them and then you know about 300 yards or so was the village proper from that and they were they were real close to the village not very far at all so she said once they got to that old dilapidated cabin something hit it on the other side of it bam and it shook the whole place uh startled her grandma so much that she dropped her berry bucket snatched her up under her gra her grandma did under her arm and took off running uh fell a couple times because her grandma was elderly but she was motivated uh, picked her up ran ran and uh the second time her grandma fell up uh, because trying to run in the tundra and on a, a well-beaten path it, it, it's not very even you got to understand there's all sorts of little little tripping obstacles in some of these paths well the second time her grandma tripped they were probably about 50 feet away from that place she said she could see its face looking over the top of this old building looking down at her and her grandma her grandma saw it too she said it was pitch black uh she couldn't make out a whole lot of detail but she could see the shine in the eye uh, of like a living being she said the eyes looked black from that distance the hair was black but as her grandma picked her up the second time, she heard something similar as the young lady from the last episode that uh, similar to I want you for myself. So that's just uh, I, I couldn't imagine being a young lady and having something like that invade my thoughts and, and tell me these things. It would just be creepy, creepy, creepy. Uh, I want to thank Cynthia for being brave enough to share um, again, she didn't want to share exact location or any of that stuff. There, there's a huge superstitious uh, aspect to a lot of native life. And, you know, there's bad omens that could come as far as they're concerned, as far as speaking about these things, you know. <clears throat> you know, as far as to maybe a, uh, someone's pregnant, you talk about the hairy man or whatever. It may come and, and steal that baby once it's born, that, that type of thing. So they take it very serious in the bush. Uh, it, it's it's not taken lightly. It's not taken as a joke. Uh, and again, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And we'll catch you guys soon on the next one.